Hello everyone and welcome to another Banner Verdict. And today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Octopath Traveler Banner. Now that we have the information, the information was a little bit late getting posted today and I, what, I did do this review actually once already, which is why you will probably notice some things if you're a longtime stream viewer. Uh, but the point is, is that I basically kind of did the review based on the Japanese information, and the Japanese information wasn't complete, uh, or didn't give a good enough picture of what this banner is like, so I'm redoing this really quickly and hoping to get it up very quick, because, hey, you, you might be curious about how it's doing. So the Octopath banner, well... Just like other limited time events, we're seeing the Octopath tickets, uh, which are the limited time unit tickets where if you get five of them, you basically get the unit of your choice. Kind of a safety net. Also, as it turns out, there is a guaranteed 5k banner on it. So basically, you pull on this banner, you're guaranteed either one Primrose or one Ulbrick. And as it turns out, one of these options is better than the other. Anyway, so let's get right into it, and let's talk about the Octopath banner, because honestly going into this banner, I had some big worries about it. I wasn't entirely convinced a lot of the units were super great, and I'm still not convinced most of the units are super great. First of all, Tressa, 3 to 5 star, her TMR ended up being kind of worse than I thought it would be. A 15% magic and 15% attack plus 25% EXP boost is pretty worthless to anyone who's been playing the game for a long time. For new players, maybe you can grind out some e much needed EXP in the Vortex, but it still seems like there are better ways you could spend the stamina. So I'm not entirely convinced that this is the any kind of unit that you really need. She is cute though, so if you're a big fan of her, you might just want her for your collection. Next up is Therian. Now, Therian's kit, honestly, four to six star. We now live in a seven star meta. It makes it really easy for me to just go, yeah, moving on kind of thing. But anyway, Therian's TMR, 12 attack, 26 defense, and has a 30% camouflage on it, as well as a 20% physical evade. So basically, it's kind of like fixed dice in a way. It definitely has some of the stats that Fixed Dice has, but has, you know, some camouflage, or I mean, sorry, I should say it has some better stats than Fixed Dice has, but honestly, the camouflage at first made me a little bit concerned, because I'm not sure how it's never really come up. You've never been like, yeah, I want a Provoke tank with Dodge on it and some camouflage so he doesn't get hit. But anyway, camouflage does not directly affect evasion. So in effect, this is potentially, Therian is maybe an easy way to get fixed dice since you can get some TMR removals from this event. However, I'm not super convinced that this is the greatest thing for a tank. You, I mean, the 26 defense is an extra nice bonus, but hey, why not just potentially, like the place that I'm thinking that this could be really great on is a support unit or a healer. Uh, camouflage is great, and some physical evasion on top of it is really nice, especially for some units that already have camouflage. You know, this is just a little bit better. Anyway, Therian's TMR, not as bad as I thought. The unit himself, mm, the, there wasn't anything that really grabbed me. It could have been wrong. I might have made not looked carefully enough, but four to six star. Seven stars are kind of the meta. Now, next up is Ulbrich. That's, there we are, there's Ulbrich. Now his TMR, 40% HP, 20% defense, and 100% paralyzed resist. Generally nice TMR for tanks, but in the world we exist, tanks kind of want more evasion right now since so many trials just flat kill physical tanks who are not evasion based. So honestly, it's a nice TMR, but it's probably not necessary. Super TMR wise, 1000 HP, 62 defense, 55 spirit, light armor with 20% extra to attack and defense. It's a nice light armor, there's no doubt about it, it has great stats on it, but would I go super hard for it? Not a chance. Anyway, moving on. Uh, next up, just taking a look at Ulbrich's kit, 
First of all, his defense isn't as high as C.G. Sagheart, even though he can put the same number of points in. This is probably because his kit uh, has a whole bunch of skills that are either based on attack or defense. But long story short, his defense will probably never be as high. He has a lot of HP passives too, but I doubt uh, he m it might only end up being about as good, if not slightly worse than Gladio. Long story short, Ulbrich looking at his kit is kind of weird. His limit burst is, you know, a 75% chance to intercept physical damage for three turns and reduces damage from 50 to 70% and also reduces damage taken between 11% at its base and 40% at its top for all allies. CG Sagheart's damage doesn't provide a cover, but it does provide a higher damage reduction at 45%. So while this is dirt cheap at 20 limit burst crystals, I'm not super impressed by his limit burst for any reason. He has auto regen, he has abilities that either, you know, he has a natural 50% chance to be provoked, he has a lot of HP passives in his kit. He also for some reason has the 30 hit at 4 frames Lunara chaining that is based on his attack. So if you're building him as a defense tank, it's, you're going to get nothing out of it. And as an attack unit, he's really never going to cut up to it. So Ulbrich has a really weird kit in that sense. Now, in a 7 star, it gets a little better. Equipping his TMR gives him an extra 50% to attack and defense. He has a cooldown that is available turn 1, 4 turn cooldown, 200% increase to attack for four turns to the caster, restore 240 MP split over three turns, and gains access to a couple of abilities that are just different attacks, but nothing really that special to me. Now, Ulbrich's uh, 54 MP one-hit physical attack that's 720% for his defense might be good if you build him for high defense, but if you're ever needing an evade unit, then his defense won't be that great anyway. So, yeah. Available turn 1 and on a 7 turn cooldown, his other cooldown ability it increases his defense of 200% for 6 turns to the caster. 25,000 HP split over 5 turns and grants access to an ability for 5 turns. Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of different cover abilities. The one thing I really like is for equipping his own TMR, if his HP falls a hell of a lot, like, you know, to below 40%, assuming he has a ton of HP in this example, Increase of defense and spirit of 160%. But again, I'll, here's the big thing to me. He doesn't have the charm. He doesn't have the damage reduction. And his cooldown abilities, he doesn't have the really cool cooldown ability that C.G. Sagheart has, which is a massive either physical or magic damage reduction for a turn. Maybe only one turn, but it's still really, really good. So long story short, I'm just not super impressed about anything in Ulbricht's kit. Ulbricht's kit is at best comparable with other tanks, and that's being somewhat generous. Because other tanks like Gladio has natural stomp immunity. Seiji Seghard is natural charm immunity. So looking at Ulbrich, Ulbrich is just kind of another tank that might be good, is certainly passable, but nothing really that special, so moving on. And the last unit is Primrose, and if we were going to talk about a unit that was actually kind of amazing, it's essentially Primrose. Primrose is Trust Mastery, a 16 defense, 40 spirit, 40% spirit, 100% petrify resistance accessory, is actually a little bit bananas and nuts. It's quite the impressive accessory on its own. It's very, very high statted. It's good for multiple units and it's good for survivability. Really like it. Super Trust Mastery, 30% magic, 60% spirit, 80% chance to ignore one fatal attack when HP is about 40%. Generally pretty nice. No really big issues with anything here. That's all really good. My really big problem though is that it's not super needed. It's, it's nice. It, it's a definite thing, but you can probably not need it. Now, comparing stat-wise stat to other buffers out there or support units, like Eurysia is the one that I'm going to pick because Eurysia is one of the more common ones. Eurysia is generally looked at as being generally stronger than CG Nickel. Generally stronger. Her limit burst has some extra things that CG Nickels just doesn't do. 
This girl looks to be a little bit squishier than your Aisha. Her defense and spirit stats are not that as great as your Aisha by a fair amount, so that makes Primrose a little bit squishy. Now, with that being said, Primrose's limit burst. Now, at a 5 star, it's an AoE 5 turn, maxed out 150% to attack, defense, magic, and spirit. 4,000 HP heal split over 5 times with a 10 times mod to all allies. 150 MP with a 0.2 times mod split over 5 turns to all allies. And 4 limit burst crystals to all allies. That's really strong, but when you get to her 7 star, it's a 5 turn maxed out 200% to all stats, 5,000 HP with a 10 times mod split over 5 turns, 200 MP split over 5 turns, and 6 limit burst crystals. This um, is an incredibly strong thing. It's a lot of survivability, and it is the highest all buff for 5 turns is very strong. Her limit burst is also only 33 crystals for in terms of expensive, how, how expensive it is. So, comparing to Uraisha, Uraisha has a, you know, costs two more limit burst crystals, but hers is only 170%, I believe, and the other thing to remember here, hers also gives a 3000 HP barrier. Now, is that more valuable than 200% to all stats? Maybe. Kind of depends on the team. But Primrose's limit burst is top fucking notch. Absolutely. Now, in her kit, she what's really interesting is she has natural charm immunity. Now, Yurisha has stop immunity, so again, six, a, six dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. Both are really, really good for that, and I absolutely really like both of those. Um, two, 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 two. Let me just double check real quick. Now, she has ways to increase to actually charm enemies, a 30% natural charm, but also if she gets hit, she has a chance to charm the enemies too, so that's really cool. She can debuff dark resistance, which is just okay, it's nothing really that great. Uh, she, has a, she has abilities that allow her to restore HP, give 200% limit burst fill rate. Uh, she is immune to sleep, on guaranteed. She ha has ways of doing dark damage and increasing dark damage resistance to her allies. But the big thing in her kit is kind of, well, how to say this. Uh, one of the nice, super nice things is her dances. Now, her dances, she has the ability to use any two in a turn. Now, her regular dances are 130% to for three turns to all allies and increase, actually give killers to the parties as well for three turns, either humans, dragons, spirits, or plants. So uh, that's a nice little bonus on top of things. Kind of makes you think about which dances to use. Now, she also has... Uh, now we get into her seven star kit, sorry. And her seven star kit is where things really get hyped up because again, that limit burst is increased so much. But equipping her own TMR gives her an increase in magic and HP by 30%, a 40% chance to counter attacks, which gives her that 20% chance to afflict charm on all enemies for two turns. That could be nasty in arena, really nasty. Uh, her cooldown, both are 7 turn, both available turn 1. The first one reduces damage to all allies by 40% for 6 turns, which is a long time, 250 MP, and it gives her access to her better dances for 5 turns. Her 100 MP one gives an increase of attack and magic of 180% for 6 turns to all allies and gains access to her dance, her super dances for her, her a couple of different moves. Now, all of that is really good, but she also has one other dance in her 7-star kit, which adds the dark element to physical attacks for 5 turns to 1 ally and 5 limit burst crystals. I really like this ability. This potentially means that uh, Axtar can chain his 30-hit ability with Nagi super easy, so I'm all for that. Now, those abilities that she does get, the dances that she can get are 76 MP each, that are all 160% buffs to all for multiple turns and 40% killers on each of them. Same thing, just better. Her other three abilities she unlocks are another uh, dark damage ability, sorry, that debuffs dark resistance of 100% for five turns, 
dark damage attacks and increased dark resistance and reduced damage taken for multiple turns. Long story short, Primrose is all about dark damage and buffing, and both of them are done really nice. Now, here's the thing. In her kit, she does have a problem that I can see. That she really doesn't have a good all-access buff that she can use at any time. Basically, she kind of has to use, you know, a couple of her dances per turn, meaning that, you know, you could end up in a bad position. Maybe. Also, unlocking her super dances does take a turn, but at least gives, you know, some benefit to the party. But her limit burst is just off the wall insane, and kind of actually uh, is a super nice option for people who don't have Satan and do have Axtar, because now you can get that nice 200% buff to defense and spirit a different way. So yes, Primrose is the real winner of this banner, TMR, Super TMR, and unit-wise. She is actually really insanely good and insanely powerful. If you don't have a 7-star buffer, get her. If you do already have a max out Nickel or um, Eurasia, you're probably perfectly fine to skip this banner. As a matter of fact, it's the same thing with Ulbrich. If you have a cover tank already, you're not going to need this guy. Long story short, there is a, you know, this banner has some good stuff. The four-star TMR is really good. Primrose is absolutely amazing. Albrecht is just kind of okay when it comes to other tanks. So hopefully that has decided you, but long story short, I give a big hearty welcome to Primrose, who is just a top-tier buffer. Albrecht, yeah, I mean, if you get him TMR, you can build him as a solid tank. Therian, nice TMR. Tressa, better luck next time. So that's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one, when we take probably a review look at some of these units in more in-depth. Till then, see you next time.